We're at Basco Paints, the home of Duracoat. They recently opened up a state-of-the-art facility in January this year where they're producing or they have an installed capacity of 4 million litres per month. This is paint that is going out to the region. They're exporting to as far as Congo Brazzaville and Congo Kinshasa. Let us find out what is in that can of paint. How do you come about that paint that you use in your house or whatever it is that you need paint? From here, one can see part of the expansive Basco Paints factory set on five acres of land in Nairobi's industrial area, which employs about 500 people. It all starts in this control room on the fourth floor. Once an order comes in, the specifics are keyed into the system, which then sets the machines rolling. Well, here basically we have a semi-automated plant. Right? Um, what happens basically is we have raw materials coming in from the other side of the factory. Uh, loading into bug tanks. Uh, all these things are done at a command of uh, the computer as you can see here. This is the main control room which decides uh, what paint is to be made where exactly. Now each of these blenders here are fixed for a certain kind of paint to be made. So we have our control room manager who decides which paint is to be made where. And he decides what products are going, what raw materials are going into which product. In those big tanks we have resins, yeah. solvents, and in the small tanks, we have liquid additives, which goes into small quantity into okay. top paint. Mm -hmm. So once the command is issued from the control uh, room, yeah. so all these uh, uh, liquid additive resins and the solvents, they are transferred or they are dropped into the processing tanks. Gravity also appears to have a role to play in the process, moving down from the fourth to the third floor. Once the command is issued, yeah. it is dropped into the tanks. So yes. here also the resin and the solvent is... Uh, transferred from the uh, tank from the top floor so now they will we will be adding here uh, pigment yeah. manually okay. so once that is done yeah. then we'll run uh, run it for 45 to 50 minutes like these pigments yeah. when they are dispersed into the liquid form it tends to settle down so we need to make sure that the pigments don't settle down okay. so that is an anti-settling additive uh, which we call a paint is composed of pigments, solvents, resins and various additives. The pigments give the paint color, solvents make it easier to apply and additives can serve in everything from fillers to anti-fungicides. From there, a sample is withdrawn and taken to the QC where we have a QC lab on the third floor itself. So then it is checked uh, for all the parameters like hiding or opacity in layman's language we, you can say. Then the grinding, the finish of the paint, the viscosity or a thickness, what uh, you can call it. All those parameters are checked at that level. This is uh, the sample from the batch which is just uh, completed. We're all uh, from the blending tank. Mm -hmm. So now we will compare it against uh, the standard. So we will compare the hiding or the opacity. So this is the uh, uh, opacity chart we call. So we'll apply side by side uh, these two paints and uh, with this bar coater we'll make a drawdown to compare the hiding of the paint, whether it is matching to the standard or not. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Basco utilizes an extensive array of quality control measures. So this is basically a wire bar coater. So of, of 80 microns, so it gives a uniform fill th thickness. So what we are seeing here is at uniform film thickness, yeah. whether the opacity of the paint is matching to the standard. standard. Yeah, this is the standard and this is the batch. And uh, the opacity is very close to the standard. So, so that's how we compare the opacity. This is a green, this is yellow, this is uh, white, yeah. So different colors will have a different level of opacity, you know. White, obviously, titanium dioxide gives the best hiding among all the pigments. Then yellows and red, because by nature, because of the chemistry of that pigment, it, it will have a lower opacity. The ingredients and the manufacturing process undergo stringent tests and the finished product is checked to ensure that it is of high quality. As you can see, we manufacture, uh, manufacture our own teams. 
The tin making section improves efficiency by ensuring that the whole process is under one roof. The steel arrives in the manufacturing plant in large coils and is then cut into pieces determined by the size of the can required. The sheet is then rolled into a cylinder and the joint heat sealed. The can is then passed through a flanger where the top and bottom of the can are flared outwards to accept the ends. A plain end is fixed on one end to create a base and a ring is pressed to the top flange of the can to hold a lid. Yeah, once the bottom and uh, top ring is uh, trimming is done, then we put a sleeve. So once these sleeves are put here, then it is passed through the oven. The inside surface of the weld is lacquered. The finished can is then palletized before being moved to the paint filling section. As you can see, the filling is done automatically by the machine. There is a fixed weight or volume for each and every can. So they, they are, right now they are filling a half liter uh, uh, can. So it is filled automatically half liter as for the machine. As you can see there, the, the filling is done automatically by the machine and it is filled exactly as per the requirement. Yeah, precisely as per the requirement. In one minute, we fill 72 pieces of half liter. So once the filling is done, then it is uh, put into carton. At, yeah and then it is transferred to the warehouse, ready for dispatch then, yeah. Now this turned out to be my favorite part of the factory. The sheer number of colors that I could choose from if I want to paint is simply mind-boggling. Shem here tells me that there are over 7,000 shades that I can pick from and all he'll need to do is program his machine to give me that shade. But I, I couldn't go through this, so I got a slightly easier chart that gave me the colors in a more basic manner. And um, my color of the day is mistletoe, right here, that shade of green. And that's what we're going to make here at the Color Mania Center. The Color Mania Center can dispense from 1 to 20 liters of paint on demand. Thousands of shade recipes are stored in this computer and carefully calculated to create the required colorant to add to the already prepared vinyl mat. Second one is in now. The mixture is then given a vigorous shake to ensure an even tone. We're, we're now at just about um, coming up to about half a minute of shaking. This paint is available on demand. You just need to go to the Color Mania Center and you choose a shade and you have what you want in terms of paint. And now your paint is ready. I'll just okay. the chart so that I can open it for you. We need to match it yeah. and ensure that we have, we have the right shade. Yeah. All right. That is close. Can we just, let's... We have our one liter of mistletoe emulsion paint ready for use. This state-of-the-art semi-automated plant is yet to be launched, but it is churning out just under 2 million liters of paint a month while maintaining a very small inventory due to its efficiency. A fleet of distribution trucks are at hand two or three times a day to deliver supplies to customers. We have just gone through the entire paint making process. A lot of work that goes on behind these walls and also a lot of people involved in making this can of paint that is now being dispatched to the various outlets. You probably only will come into contact with this paint once it gets to you as the customer, not knowing the work that has gone into making it. And that's what we're here showcasing at Basco Paints. Wamboi Wawero for Capital FM TV.